Today we're going to discuss uh, the assembly process of all the parts that make up the closets on this job. For ease of identification and insulation, each part is labeled with an exploded view. It details the room that it's in, the job number, and the part that it is. It will be taped to each piece. The first step in the installation will be to install the leveling legs on the bottom of the cedar cabinetry. Uh, basically, the holes have already been drilled on the bottom of the cabinets. Three screws. Screws are all supplied in the box. Those will be attached to the bottom of the cabinet and the legs will insert into that. They can be adjusted to the proper height afterwards, which should be around four and a half inches. First step is to take the interior portion of the cabinets. Once they're leveled, attach them together. This is done using one inch drywall screws in the pre-drilled holes already supplied for you. Once the cedar interiors are in place, you can then attach the two together using the supplied one inch drywall screws. Leave it on a low torque setting because it is cedar. We don't want it to strip out. Once the two interiors are screwed together, the hole can be filled with a cedar plug that's supplied with a kit. It'll then be sanded smooth to match the rest of the interior. Once the cedar interiors are attached together, the next step would be to assemble the chestnut exteriors which will slide over those. This is done by using a pocket hole and a two and a half inch pocket hole screw and a long driver bit which will be included with the kit. Prior to assembling the chestnut exterior, the outer braces on the upper and lower rail will have to be removed in order to access the pocket hole screws. I would suggest to set the larger of the return panels in place first. Next step would be to take the lower rail, set that in place, take the opposing return panel, set that into place, and then the last part would be to install the top rail. The top and bottom rails all have tenons cut into them. The return panels will all be mortised to accept these in the installation process. The rails are attached to the return panels with a two and a half inch pocket screw supplied in the kit. Right now, we've attached the lower rail to the left and right return panel. The next step would be to set the top rail in place. Once the tenon is inserted into the mortise, he'll apply the remaining pocket hole screws to the upper rail. Once all the pocket screws are installed in the framework of the chest and exterior, the next step would be to reinstall all the bracing that came on the upper and lower rail. This will allow you to attach the interior to the exterior of the closets. The next step will be to slide the exterior over the interior of the cabinets. Once that is done, We'll use inch and a quarter screws to attach the two together. I'm going to just use this shim. to shim to help you slide the exterior over the interior of the cabinets. The next step, like I said, will be to use the inch and a quarter drywall screws to attach the two together. I'm going to hold against the exterior to keep it tight. This process will be continued around the entire opening. The next step in the installation process would be to hang the doors in place. The hinges are already installed on the framework and the doors themselves. They will merely need to be held in place and then the pins inserted. The pins should drop right in. If they don't drop right in, they can be tapped in with a block of wood.
Once the catheter is assembled, it can be slid the last few inches into place. To access mounting areas, the mirror and drawers can be removed to do so.